Dear viewers, welcome to Northside Satellite Channel and Tel Alumir TV. In the occasion of Eid al-Adha al-Mubarak, Nursat Jordan office represented by Dr. Basim al-Sam'an and the team extend their warmest greetings to His Majesty King Abdullah II, the Hashemite family and the Jordanian family as a whole, praying to God to keep our king in good health and our country blessed with prosperity and peace. Now let's start with the headlines. New transfers and appointments in the Latin Patriarchate. The Maronite parish in Jordan raises the divine sacrifice for the sake of the people of Lebanon. Great preparations are being made in Iraq to welcome the largest Christian pilgrimage. We also have five new priests from Africa, America and Asia were ordained in Jerusalem. Welcome back. This week, and due to the health issues that face His Holiness Pope Francis, there has not been a weekly meeting for him with the faithful in St. Peter's Square at the Vatican. We pray to God Almighty to grant him health and speedy recovery. His Beatitude Patriarch Pierre Battista Pizzabella, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, sent a pastoral message to the bishops, priests, and all the faithful in the diocese about the new appointments within the Latin Patriarchate and the main tasks of the appointees to be effective as of the 15th of next August. And at the beginning, his Beatitude thanked the former patriarchal representatives and those close to him in this challenging and difficult phase. Accordingly, it was decided that Bishop William Shomali would assume the mission of the General Patriarchal Vicar in Jerusalem and to be replaced by Father Jamal Khadr. And Father Hanna Kildani was transferred from Nazareth to the diocese and he would be replaced by Father Rafiq Nuhra. It was decided also to appoint Father Yaqub Rafidi as head of schools in Palestine, in addition to appointing him a priest of the parish of Ramallah. His beatitude gave the patriarchal representatives the power to appoint committees to assist them in the deliverance and receiving. On the other hand, his beatitude patriarch Pizzabella affirmed his pride in the Syriac patriarch Ignitus Yunan for his great deeds and pioneering positions in defending the Christians of the East and the Christian presence there. This came during the apostolic visit paid by Patriarch Yunan to the headquarters of the Latin Patriarchate in Jerusalem and his meeting with Patriarch Pizzabella. During the meeting, their Beatitudes discussed the general situation in the Middle East region, the affairs of the Universal Church, and ecumenical relations. Patriarch Pizzabella presented to Patriarch Yunan a memorial gift, which is an icon of the Virgin Mary, the Lady of Jerusalem, and the Syriac Catholic Patriarch presented to Patriarch Pizzabella the icon of the Holy Family and a token of love and gratitude. Coinciding with the meeting of His Holiness Pope Francis in the Vatican with the leaders of the churches in Lebanon, the servant of the Maronite parish of St. Sharbel in Amman, Father Joseph Suwed, celebrated the divine sacrifice in the presence of a group of believers for the sake of the Lebanese brothers, who suffers oppression, poverty and instability due to the political and socio-economical crisis that the country is going through. On the occasion of the feast of St. Peter and Paul, Five new priests from Africa, America, and Asia were ordained in Jerusalem by laying the hands of his beatitude. Per Patista Pizzabella, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, presiding over the Divine Mass. His beatitude pointed out in his sermon the two saints' characters, where Peter learned that his life and death tell about the life and death of his Lord Jesus, who saved him from death. Then there is Paul, who faced death and was left with only one thing, faith. And at the end of the sermon, his beatitude the patriarch laid his hands on the newly priests, and the peak of laying hands was by giving these priests the priestly robes and anointing the palm of their hands with the holy oil. A delegation of members of the House of Representatives visited the American University in Madaba, during which they met the president of the university, Professor Ma'moun Akrush, and congratulated him on his appointment by the Higher Education Council as president of the university. During the meeting, which was attended by the members of the Board of Trustees, Engineer Usama Twal, the House of Representatives delegation, which included Engineer Haytham Ziyadeen, Vice President of the Council Dr. Ayman Mdanat, Engineer Majdil Yaqub, and Professor Omar Nabir, expressed their confidence in Dr. Akrush's administrative and academic competence, which qualified him to gain the confidence of the Higher Education Council and appoint him to this prestigious position. For his part, the president of the university, Dr. Akrush, welcomed the deputies and briefed them on the educational reality at the American University, which is originally affiliated with the Latin Patriarchate, the educational majors in which they are taught 
and the general academic level of the university. For their part, the deputies affirmed their support for this university, which in a short period of time became a scientific beacon, providing Jordan with scientific competencies that serve the local community and the world in general. At the end of the meeting, Dr. Akrush escorted the parliamentary delegation a tour in the corridors and departments of the university, where the officials of the faculties and departments explained to them about work and programs. The General Synod of the Congregation of the Holy Rosary elected Mother Sophie Sam'an Hattar as a new General President of the Order for the next six years. The Synod also elected the members of the Advisory Council for the President-elect. They are Sisters Madeleine de Babne, Maureen Fuad, Ferenjini Habib and Ghada Na'meh. His Eminence Bishop William Shomili, Latin Bishop of Jordan, the Latin Patriarchate and the Nursat Satellite Channel represented by Dr. Basim Sam'an, the Regional Director in the Holy Land, Jordan and Palestine, congratulated Mother Sophie Hattar and the Councillors, asking the Lord Jesus Christ to bless their new ministry and to keep the Rosary as a living witness in the Church and a faithful servant of its spiritual, human and educational mission. The Iraqi province of Diqar is preparing to receive the largest Christian pilgrimage trip to visit the birthplace of the Prophet Ibrahim and recite the Abrahamic prayer. The trip includes 13,000 Christians and will pave the way for regular pilgrim trips on a monthly basis. And these trips were agreed upon by the Iraqi Foreign Minister Fuad Hussein during his visit to the Vatican with the head of the Foundation Tourism and Christian Pilgrimage there. Where the awaited pilgrimage trip to the Qar is considered the largest Christian pilgrimage trip in history to the archaeological region of Aur, the birthplace of the Prophet Ibrahim. And in light of the conditions that Iraq is going through, these trips are of great importance in reviving the tourism in the Governorate that contains the largest archaeological sites in the world. His Beatitude, the Patriarch of the Holy City, Theophilus III, sent a message to the Religious Freedom Summit to be held this July in Washington, in which he expressed the continuing challenges of the Christian of the Holy Land and his strong dissatisfaction with harassments the churches and religious clergymen face from the extremism in some groups in Palestine who show no respect or tolerance and they do not respect the sanctity of the holy places, pointing out that this summit's interest in the holy tomb is a great encouragement to Christians to have patience and steadfastness in the holy lands. The Fraternity of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, affiliated to the Melkite Greek Catholic Diocese, met with Father Judge Moody Hendele, priest of the St. Elias Parish in Jabal Hussein in Amman, where Father Hindele spoke in the meeting about holiness, explaining the lives of saints and the state of grace in holiness, and the conditions of holiness while living the life of the gospel, and submitting to the Holy Spirit and not being isolated from the church, as he showed a distinctive characteristics of the saints, which the permanent presence of God in their lives. A festive mass was held on the occasion of the feast of the Lord's Most Holy Body and Blood at Joseph Latin Church in Mafraq. The Mass was presided over by Father Tariq Hjazin in the presence of the deacons of the church and a group of believers. This feast is one of the most important feasts in the liturgical year, where believers are always keen to participate in it, as it is celebrated traditionally on the Thursday following Holy Trinity Sunday. The foreign community in Amman celebrated the Holy Mass at the Virgin of Nazareth Church in Swafiyah where Father Gerrit presided over the liturgy and explained the good word of the Gospel in his sermon, and talked about the ritual of Eucharist and the role that God plays in our role in terms of our relationship with Him and what we have to do as humans to fulfill our part in this relationship. What made me think of this memory this week? Well, praying with our readings today, especially our first reading and especially our Gospel, we're confronted with, we're invited to consider the power of ritual, of rituals in our lives. After all, in the first reading, we hear about the ritual of the ceremony that is finalizing the covenant between the people and God. And of course, in our gospel, a story we've heard many times, a story we participate in at the Mass, it's the ritual of the Eucharist the ritual of the institution of the Eucharist, the first time that Jesus shared that gift with us. And in the first one, we, we see this agreement between God and the people. We see this agreement that is kind of like at that time in the history, it was an agreement between a king and a people. 
But here we see it a little bit different because God is giving them dignity and treating them almost as if he is entering into an agreement with another king. And we see all of the different things that happen in order to do, in order to see what it is that the people need to do, what it is that God needs to do. If they're entering into an agreement, both sides need to know what they're doing. And that's why Moses had written it all down and then had read it to the people. And then, of course, in the gospel, in the institution of the Eucharist, we see that Jesus' closeness, the Jesus who's walked with us through the whole gospel, healing, teaching with the people, we see that that closeness will be available to us forever in the gift of the Eucharist that we come today to celebrate. The Cypriot ambassador in Amman, Mr. Michel Iwanua, and his wife, Mrs. Katrina, visited St. George's Church in the city of Zarqa. The Archmandrite, Athanos Kakish, welcomed the guest and presented him with a commemorative gift. For his part, the guest greeted the parish and thanked the Archmandrite for his good reception. During the program, he was pleased to visit the station at the Princess Mona al Hussein Center for the care of elderly women, which is affiliated with the Orthodox Charitable Society and he was acquainted with the work of the center by economist Farah Haddad, followed by a visit to the school and the churches of St. Joseph, where Father Hani Jamil and Professor Majd Chahatit explained to His Excellency about the school's programs and activities. At the end of the visit, His Excellency expressed his great thanks and appreciation for the efforts and activities carried out by the churches and institutions in the service of the local community in the city of Zarqa. The city of Aqaba is witnessing a large turnout of visitors coming to it from inside and outside the kingdom, after declaring it a safe area from the coronavirus, as the entry of visitors to it was facilitated with ease. The governor of Aqaba, Mohammed al rafa said that after implementing the measures imposed by the government with the aim of achieving a safe summer in Aqaba, by applying the health protocol to the land, sea and airports, it has been exempted from the partial ban and all tourism and commercial sectors operating in it have been reopened. Here, dear viewers, we have come to the end of our news. And those were the headlines. New transfers and appointments in the Latin Patriarchate. The Maronite Parish in Jordan raises the divine sacrifice for the sake of people of Lebanon. Great preparations are being made in Iraq to welcome the largest Christian pilgrimage. Five new priests from Africa, America and Asia were ordained in Jerusalem. Thank you for watching. Until we meet again, have a good day.